After Avery experiment, his discovery that DNA was a source of genetic material, but although not convincing enough, came Hershey and Chase experiment that follow up on his experiment. Hershey and Chase took a different approach to discovering that DNA was a source of genetics. In their experiment, they used viruses that infect bacteria called bacteriophage. The experiment was very simple. During that time, they discovered that viruses only have two material types. One is the DNA in the middle and two was the protein coat on the outside of virus. And virus needs a host to live in order to pass on their information. So Hershey and Chase used radioactive material to tag, first of all, the protein coat of the virus, and let the virus infect the bacteria, and then dissect the whole thing to see if it was the protein that was passed on to the bacteria. In the second part of their experiment, they used radioactive material and tagged the DNA and check to see if it was the DNA that was passed on to the bacteria. The bacteriophage is a T2 virus that looks kind of like a spider. In the center of the capsid is the DNA material, and on the outside is simply just protein. So for the first part of their experiment, they used radioactive element to tag the protein. Then inside the flask, they let the virus infect the bacteria with the material. They use a blender to tear everything apart, and then they centrifuge to separate the material. Centrifuge is when they put all the material inside a test tube, and they put it in a centrifuge machine and spin very fast. The heavy stuff is going to settle down to the bottom, called the pellet, and the lighter stuff is going to free float in the liquid, which is above. So the bacteria and whatever material that was injected into the bacteria is heavier and will be found on the bottom, which is the pellet. And the leftover of the virus, which is the lighter part, is going to be free-floating in the liquid. So when they checked the liquid to see what material were not in the bacteria, they found out that the radioactive protein was found in the liquid, which therefore results in the fact that the material, the protein, was not injected into the bacteria. So for the second part of their experiment, they repeated the same process. This time, they radioactively tag the DNA and find out what happens. The results show that the pellet, which is on the bottom, which is the bacteria, it has a lot of radioactive DNA. So therefore, DNA must have been passed on to the bacteria. So comparing the two experiments, the first part, the radioactive protein was not found in the bacteria. And the second part, the radioactive DNA, was found inside the bacteria. So for virus to replicate, they need to pass on the material, in this case DNA, which is required in order for them to replicate inside the host. In order to tag the proteins and DNA, they use isotope. Remember what isotopes are? Okay, well, isotope is basically an element in its natural state. For example, in this case, carbon, it has its proton and its neutron. Therefore, it's balanced and it's a normal element. Whereas the other one, the isotope version of it, is a carbon that has its proton but extra neutron. So the difference simply in an isotope is an element that has extra neutron. But the benefit from it is because it gives off radiation. Science used this as a substitute for the original element. So because the isotope can be used as a substitute and it's radioactive, scientists can use the isotope element, put it in something, for example in this case, to tag the protein. We can see where the proteins are so we can trace the protein. For the protein, they use radioactive sulfur. That means it's a sulfur with extra neutron which gives off radiation. It's the same substitute for the original. When the virus takes up the pro I mean when the virus takes up the isotope and use it as for their protein to build their protein material, it now has the radioactive sulfur instead of the original sulfur. 
and science can use the radiation that gives off by the sulfur to detect where the proteins are going as a trace. The reason they use sulfur is because inside DNA, DNA does not have sulfur. So you want to use an element that is not found in the other part. Therefore, the virus will only use the sulfur for the protein and not for the DNA. So we can see that only the protein will technically glow in the dark. And then for the DNA part, they use radioactive phosphorus. Because the protein does not use phosphorus, therefore it will not interact. Only the DNA which has phosphorus will use the substitute phosphorus. And because this radioactive phosphorus gives off radiation, scientists can detect and trace where the radioactive phosphorus are being held. In this case, DNA. Now to strengthen the result, the scientists use the bacteria in the first part of the experiment and then they grow the culture and they check to see if these bacteria glows in the dark which comes from the radioactive protein. Because the radioactive protein was never passed on to the bacteria, these bacteria did not glow. In the second part of their experiment where they tag the DNA and the bacteria has the new virus DNA, these bacteria now glow and then they put them on a petri dish and let them incubate and increase in number and they run a scan and this time these bacteria they shows a glow of the DNA because they have the virus DNA 